Yeah, good uh, morning, everyone. Um, I am Tere Badia, I'm the Secretary General of Culture Action Europe, and I want to warmly welcome you to the press presentation and the public launch of this Amplify project. Um, but let uh, first me let me say a couple of words about Culture Action Europe for those uh, that uh, who don't know uh, for, uh, about uh, our network. So Culture Action Europe uh, is the major European network of cultural networks, organizations, artists, activists, academics, policymakers, with more than 170 members right now. We are the only intersectoral culture network in Europe. Uh, we try to bring together all practices in culture from performing arts to literature, the visual arts, um, community centers, activists, uh, etc. We are also one of the first ports of call for informed opinion and debate about the arts and cultural policy in the European Union. And we are very active at the European level. And uh, one of the most important events in this continent in the next month is the Conference on the Future of Europe. And our intention uh, with this Amplify project that we are presenting and launching today is uh, to contribute to diversify the debate on this common future that has many challenges ahead. Uh, we believe uh, that the Conference of the Future of Europe should engage with diverse voices, ideas, dreams to come up with a vision on the of the future of, the, of Europe that is uh, inclusive, diverse, fair, horizontal, democratic. Uh, with the Amplify project, we want to make sure that voices that speak from the fringes of uh, the mainstream narratives are considered in the conference of the future of Europe process. And this campaign aims to listen and to and amplify these voices, uh, the, the ideas, proposals, concern, concerns from uh, these underrepresented communities across the continent on this vision of the future, of the common future. Um, cultural organizations, artists, activists, uh, social and educational projects uh, that works with less represented and underprivileged groups will call for an inclusive engagement of diverse communities in shaping uh, this future. For doing so, uh, the campaign involves <clears throat> 12 hubs coordinated by our members in 12 countries. This is Denmark, this is France, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovenia, Spain and Sweden. And they are all present here, so thank you for being here uh, with us today. Um, you will have the possibility of interacting with the HAP representatives from the 12 countries in local languages, so please uh, yeah, uh, take advantage of this possibility. And uh, yeah, now let me, let, let me just uh, welcome the speakers that we have today, now in the first round of, uh, of presentations. So I want to warmly welcome Sani de Reich. Uh, she's the press officer at the spokesperson uh, unit uh, of the European Parliament. Uh, she will uh, talk about the, the Conference of the Future of Europe and any questions that you have on this regard, as please to, uh, just address uh, them to, to her. Maya Weisinger, she's the coordinator, the, the project coordinator of Amplify uh, from Call Action Europe. And then we will have two representatives of the hubs, um, the Denmark hub, we, Denmark hub which, which is coordinated by Astrid As Aspegren and the Poland Hub, which is coordinated by Magdalena Sachewska duda Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Magdalena. But uh, with uh, further ado, I would like to give now the word to Sane de Reich. Uh, please, Sane. Go ahead. Thank you, Tere. Uh, I hope you can hear me well here. Um, and thank you for inviting me here to talk about the Conference on the Future of Europe. So what is it? The Conference on the Future of Europe is a unique opportunity for European citizens to debate on Europe's challenges and priorities. No matter where you are, what you do, you can contribute and think about uh, the future that you want for the European Union. Um, it's the first exercise of its kind because it's a pan-European democratic exercise and it offers a new public forum for an open, inclusive and transparent debate with citizens. So why now? Uh, because we are at a critical time in the EU. 
in the aftermath of the pandemic, of course, but also after Brexit and also given, for example, the developments that we are seeing at the world stage. Uh, it's, I think, for example, currently also of, of what's happening in Afghanistan, it's necessary to launch this reflection and it can only be done by listening to citizens and giving them a voice. But for the European Parliament, the conference cannot be just about a debate among citizens or about listening to citizens. It needs to deliver concrete conclusions and for conclusions to be implemented. So the European Parliament, the Commission and the Council have really committed to listen, uh, but also to follow up within their sphere of competences on the recommendations which will be made. And by the spring of next year, the conference is expected to reach conclusions and to provide guidance on the future of Europe. Um, so how are voices being heard? There are different ways. First of all, there is the multilingual digital platform, which was launched back in April. Uh, and there people can contribute their ideas in nine different areas or react to other ideas. But you can also organize events or join events organized by others. This can also be, well, as you know, organizations, uh, national, local, regional authorities organize events there too. Um, and we really want as much input as possible there. And all of those ideas on the platform will be collected, analyzed and published throughout the conference and will serve as input for the next step, which is the European citizens panels, which are made up of in total 800 randomly chosen citizens. And they will discuss the input from the platform and make recommendations. And all this will then feed into the plenary of the conference and where we want as much interaction as possible. Um, I'll talk more about the citizens panels in a little bit. Uh, so where are we now in the conference? Uh, it was launched in May. Um, on the 9th of May, to be precise, which is a very symbolic date as it's Europe Day, uh, as you might know. There's been one plenary session so far of the conference in June, where most of the members of this conference have already met. Uh, so we're talking about members of the European Parliament, national parliaments, national governments, the Commission, uh, social, uh, part representatives of social partners, civil society, Committee of the Regions, European Economic and Social Committee. But the most innovative part of the conference, uh, the part where the citizens really start to take part, that's starting now in September. And this is also where the conference will get into the substance really of the discussions. Um, a bit about the citizens panels, but of course I'm here for questions. I don't want to take too much time. There'll be four of them talking about different uh, topics. Um, and the panel members have been chosen randomly, as I already said, but in a way that reflects the EU's diversity in terms of gender, in terms of uh, countries they represent, uh, uh, a selection of citizens from urban and rural areas, um, and with a big emphasis on youth, uh, because one third of the panel members will come uh, will be from uh, of between 16 and 25 years old. Um, so I already said the topics of the panels, um, the first one is on the economy, but also education, culture, youth, democracy, is the second one, climate change and the environment and health, and the last one, EU in the world and migration. And then representatives of those panels will then present the outcome of their work to the conference, to the other members in the conference. And the idea is indeed to come to a report at, in the spring of next year, which will then have to be followed up by the European Union, by the European Parliament, the Council and the Commission. And as I said, for Parliament, it's very important that the conference has a real impact and, uh, and on how the EU is set up and what it does to ensure that people's voices and concerns are at the center of the European Union's policies and decisions. Uh, I'll leave it at this, but I'm, of course, happy to take your questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sanne. So thank you very much for your representation on the whole structure, the process and the, and the aims of the Conference of the Future of Europe. And um, now Maya, uh, Maya is the coordinator, as I said, from, from this project and on our side on Culture Action Europe, and will take over from now uh, to guide uh, you over the project details, the campaign details. Maya, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Tara. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's really nice to see you all from all across Europe. I'm really glad you could join us for the official launch of the project Amplify Make the Future of Europe Yours. My name is Maya Weisinger, and I am the project coordinator for Amplify. 
Um, as has been mentioned, this project is funded by the European Parliament and is overseen by Culture Action Europe in collaboration with members of our network in 12 countries who are here with us today. The main goal of this project is really to bring underrepresented voices in the cultural sector to the Conference on the Future of Europe. So alongside the hubs early on in this uh, process, we made sure to have open dialogue surrounding the definition of what underrepresented communities means, because we know that this can differ on the context of each country and in many cases within regions of a country. So instead of creating a list of communities um, in common with each other within countries or typecasting specific communities, we work to define some key aspects of what underrepresentation can really mean within the cultural sector. So it can mean people facing barriers to participation or access. It can mean voices that are underrepresented within mainstream discourse or at the fringes of mainstream narratives. Um, and it, it's also artists, creatives, cultural organizations, and projects that are operating at the edges of the cultural sphere. And these are the voices that Amplify really seeks to listen to and to engage throughout the course of this project. Um, Amplify also emphasizes a public discourse that says more needs to happen in order to create accessible and inclusive pathways for marginalized people to participate within the cultural sector. So we know that there are a number of initiatives that engage people in the democratic process, but it's still a reality that a number of voices across Europe are left out. So Amplify is specifically searching for these gaps and looking to fill them by creating platforms for those voices to be included uh, in the future of Europe process. And Amplify is a communications project at its core, so Amplify really acts as a foundational step within a larger inclusive initiative. And uh, this campaign really focuses on the act of listening and the importance of institutional resources being devoted to bottom-up approaches to inclusive community engagement. And the hubs themselves are a diverse spread of cultural organizations and agents already operating in and working at the intersections of social, educational, and artistic segments of the cultural sphere. And um, yep, we're launching publicly to you all today. Uh, but the hubs have already been working hard in their local context to mobilize participants who are interested in meeting and sharing their ideas, proposals, and concerns about the future of Europe. Um, so a little bit about what this looks like on the ground. Um, it looks like diverse groups of people from different parts of the cultural sector meeting in participatory work groups and collaborating on writing recommendations that will be shared directly on the multilingual digital platform uh, that Sana had mentioned earlier. Um, and in a bit, we will hear some more from the individual hubs about what the project looks like in their country's context. Um, the Amplify project will also produce a recommendation that consolidates these 12 countries' contributions and synthesizes these ideas within them into an overarching set of recommendations that will really set the basis for interaction between participants and policymakers. Over the course of the conference, we'll also be utilizing our platform to spotlight key conversations and issues that came up during these participatory sessions. The goal really here is uh, being able to leverage our platforms by creating space in this ongoing public campaign for critical voices to be heard and amplified. Um, as we move forward with the project, we will also be building opportunities for networking, both locally and across Europe. Uh, throughout this campaign, we also plan on building moments for dialogue between Amplify participants and EU decision makers. And after the recommendations are submitted, we will continue to draw out the key discussions and build pathways for advocacy. So these are some of the things that are to come once the hubs have had the opportunity to collaborate more uh, within their work groups. One key event of the project that is in the works is coming in spring of 2022. We will organize a live hackathon event that structures reflection and response to the process and outcomes of the conference. And we will also include some element of a prototyping activity that engages participants, both from local communities and organizations and MEPs to problem solve in a live and collaborative context. So this hackathon will be on two levels. There will be live hub meetings uh, within countries uh, across Europe, and hopefully, pandemic provided, this can be in person. Um, but then we'll also have a broadcasted aspect to the event where we can interact between the hubs um, in a digital format and also hear their ideas in real time, as well as broadcast some content such as workshops, performances, and interviews. 
So this will be the culminating event for Amplify Make the Future of Europe Yours. So you can stay tuned. This is in the pipeline for next spring 2022. But in the meantime, we have the very important work of engaging people at the local level. So to be able to provide a sense of what that looks like, we have two of the hub representatives here today to give a brief sense of how they're engaging community and why the goals of Amplify are important in the work that they do. First, I will give the floor to Astrid Aspegren, who is the communications manager at the Center for Kunst and Interkultur in Copenhagen, Denmark, and also the editor of Connecting Audiences Denmark. I will give the floor to Astrid. Thank you very much, Maya. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Estel Espeklein. I'm the project manager of Amplify at uh, the Danish hub level. I work with CKI, which is the Center for Arts and Interculture. And uh, as Maya said, I'm also the editor of the magazine Connecting Audiences Denmark. And in our previous issue that we published in August, we actually brought an article that was written by Maya about the Amplified project, where she explained the process and really highlighted the need to diversify the public conversation. Uh, the theme of the issue was culture as a bridge builder and exactly this notion of culture as a bridge builder between the civil and the public has been our approach to this project. At CKI, we work for everybody's right to access and participate in the cultural life, regardless of their background and traditions and identity. And a lot of our work has to do with building bridges between civil society and cultural institutions. And the pandemic has made it painfully clear just how much we as human beings rely on this access to cultural life and the arts for our well being. It's not just the icing on the cake, but it's something fundamental uh, to our sense of belonging and to our connection to other people. We all have the right to take part and to see ourselves represented not only in cultural life, but in the public conversation. So in this light, it was important to us to invite people who work with marginalized people and who have an informal access to the people that they work with so we can get a firsthand perspective on these communities and their needs, their dreams, their potential, and what they can bring to the table to the Conference of the Future of Europe. Uh, because everybody benefits when more voices are being included in the conversation. So how did we go about the project? Well, in June, we started mapping all the organizations and the individuals that we wanted to invite to the Amplify project. And the organizations that we chose are all characterized by uh, working in the intersection between arts and culture and with social initiatives, uh, bottom-up initiatives. They work between the private and the public sphere, uh, but are themselves independent, and many of them entrepreneurs. And they work with artistic expression in, in one way or another. So we've mainly invited organizations that work in the cultural sector that have a focus on minority issues, specifically regarding integration, cultural meetings, racism, and mental health. Uh, and their approaches are dialogue based and with artistic expressions. So really it's organizations that work uh, very closely, very personally and get to know the people that they work with on a very personal level and sort of guide them through art and invite them to express themselves artistically. And uh, our participants work with all sorts of uh, artistic expression, be it dance, performance, theater, music, poetry, photography, filmmaking, and so on and so forth. And we're very excited because tomorrow we begin our first session tomorrow morning, and uh, we will get to know the participants a little bit better. We'll have a brainstorm session with them to, to discover what their needs are, what their challenges and their potentials. And then the second session will be held on September 15th. And this is where we will narrow down some of the key topics that in the end will form the recommendation. And that's all for me. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Astrid. That's very exciting that you have your meeting tomorrow. Um, we'll now hear from Magdalena Zakshevska duda when she is the head of the International Relations Department at the Baltic Sea Cultural Center in Gdańsk, Poland. Magda, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, actually, um, 
uh, I am the, the main uh, chief uh, specialist on strategic partnerships at the Baltic Sea Culture Center. And uh, on behalf of Baltic Sea Culture Center, I coordinate uh, the process, the consultation process of um, Amplify project in Poland. And uh, we are very happy uh, that we can cooperate with Culture Action Europe within Amplify uh, to, to run this process um, as uh, culture is about acting together, sharing feelings, empowering people. As the Baltic uh, Sea Culture Center, we strongly believe that it is important to support individuals and communities that uh, whose voice is not heard loud enough in public discourse. We also think it is important to help them realize that it's also them who can and should shape the future of Europe. Today in Poland, it seems that vulnerable groups are even more vulnerable. And unfortunately, unfortunately the same can be said about uh, democratic values in our country. That's why we think that the Amplify process is very valuable in this context. Our hub consists uh, of various organizations and informal groups uh, representing uh, freelance artists, cultural activists from uh, smaller cities and villages, the youth, um, persons with uh, disabilities, women activists, uh, LGBT activists, people with a migrant experience. So they will share their views uh, about the challenges and uh, various aspects of uh, creating culture, of experiencing culture, and how these can be transferred into recommendations for the conference on the future of Europe. We have invited an experienced couch educator and an activist, Zofia Lisiecka, who will help us uh, lead the process. Uh, the, the methodology is uh, uh, similar as in Denmark, so I, will, I won't go into details now. Um, so we have um, already finished the mapping process. And today we have a launch uh, of the consultation sessions which will uh, take place as a physical meeting. And the weather in Gdańsk is very sunny today, so we are looking forward to a very nice afternoon session in our garden. So thank you, this, that's from, from Gdańsk. Thank you so much, Magda. Again, very exciting that everything is really starting to happen in all of the hubs and we're going to have more information and more updates as we move forward. For now, I think this is a good time to open for questions. Um, I would also like to invite everyone to turn on your cameras if you feel comfortable doing so, so we have as much as we can feel like we're in the same room. Um, for those in the Zoom today, when you would like to ask a question, please either um, raise your hand, you can put a comment uh, in the comment section, and let us know uh, who we can direct your questions to. Um, if you prefer, you can also ask your question in a shared language as one of the hub members that we have here today. So the hub member um, can take your question, summarize the question for us in English, but then answer back um, in your preferred language. And for those of you joining us on Facebook or on our website, uh, please feel free to write your questions in the comments and we'll take them up here. So we will be prioritizing questions from the media. So if you are representing any of the media or press um, and you're in the live stream, just let us know in the comments which outlet you're from so we can make sure we get your question answered. And again, you can ask your question in English or in one of the languages of the hubs. Um, I think just by scanning, I know we have Spain, Slovenia, Poland, Hungary, Denmark, Italy, France, Netherlands. Am I missing anyone? These are for sure the ones I see. We have Romania as well. Um, Sweden, I see as well. Greece is here. Yes, I'm scanning the faces. <laughs> if I've left anyone out, please let me know. But if anyone would like to ask questions, either to one of the speakers you've heard or to any of the hub members from the countries I've just mentioned. Oh, we have Portugal as well. 
um, please uh, let me know. While we're waiting, perhaps maybe I can invite one of the hub members uh, to talk a little bit about their project. So maybe, uh, Lars, while I still have you here, um, can you please tell us a bit of what's happening in the Netherlands? Hi, Maya, uh, and hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me? I just put this on. Yeah, OK, great. Um, well, in the Netherlands, we had a, had a long uh, conversation about how to uh, really organize a bottom-up process, because we, 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 we found the project super important and timely and, and needed right now. But at the same time, we were concerned that somehow uh, we, as the cultural elite, would gracefully bow down to, to those who are not um, so represented and give them uh, the, the opportunity to raise their voice, which can be a patronizing um, exercise. So we were really, um, after the mapping of the field, where we really listed the key players of, um, of in the cultural field, um, not in the mainstream, um, we thought of a process of working with young people, young artists from art academies um, in The Hague and in Maastricht. Um, and because they are by definition in their 20s, um, a majority is not from the Netherlands, but from other European countries. And they have a very, very outspoken vision on how their world, uh, how they want the world to, to look like in 10 years, uh, when they will have graduated and will have to work as an artist and find their way, earn their money, and uh, which voices they are missing at the moment in the conversation about this future. So we invited them to select um, bodies, so to speak, with whom they open a conversation. And that process is going on in September now as the semester starts. Um, and those can be refugee artists. Those can be all kind of not uh, uh, represented voices from the mainstream. And they will together um, uh, structure a process up to May next year. Uh, when there will be this event open to the general public. So we kind of gave it out of our hands uh, and work with uh, teachers from the art academies that uh, together with us um, are in a conversation with the young artists, but, but they are in the driver's seat and they decide which voices they will include to the conversations that are happening now in September. Great, thank you so much, Lars. It's, I'm, I'm really enjoying seeing how each hub has taken uh, the Amplify project and has really adapted it to their local contexts in ways that work best for them. So this has been fantastic to see, especially uh, comparing between the projects we're seeing today. Thank you. Um, I think we have a question to Sana. Um, yes, Sana, could you please tell us more about the Citizens Panel on the Conference of the Future of Europe and the methodology that these panels will be using how can citizens become part of these conversations? Thank you for the question. So the citizens panels, as I said, there will be four of them, each with 200 uh, citizens in them. They'll start, uh, and each of those panels, so th there'll be, there's, a, there's a panel, as I said, on the economy, but also culture, education, youth sports. That's one panel of 200 citizens talking, discussing this same topic, or which is a very broad one, for uh, various months in, in, I mean, various months in a row, um, and in different sessions, but also remotely. Um, then there is the same, the same goes for a, a panel on European democracy and uh, European values uh, and, uh, and uh, rule of law. Another one on climate change and environment, and another one on uh, EU in the world and migration. And each of those panels meets, meets at least three times. Um, and that's uh, for the first time in Strasbourg. Uh, well, this month still, or two of them will still be this month and two in October. Um, the first one will kick off uh, on the 17th of uh, September. Um, then the second session that they have, they will do that remotely uh, in November. And then for the first, the third and kind of final session that they have, they will meet in a European city. Um, and the four European cities where these panels will meet will be in um, Dublin, Natolin, uh, Florence, and in Maastricht. Um, and how have these uh, these panels been constituted? How have they made made up? So there is a there is a whole kind of methodology indeed behind it. Um, we've 
that we've actually used uh, the expertise, the knowledge of uh, a company which which is um, which work which 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 is has experience experience in this, um, and they have uh, randomly contacted uh, citizens, uh, making sure that there is a, a good mix. Uh, as I said, urban, rural countries, of course, um, age, gender. Um, um, yeah, uh, socioeconomic as well, uh, to have a, a, the best possible mix um, for each of those panels of 200 uh, people. Uh, so this is not, these are not volunteers. This is, uh, uh, of course, <laughs> they had to be prepared and, and willing and wanting to come and, and do this. Um, but uh, as such, they should be really representative of the of European society. Um, I'll maybe leave it at that, but if you have follow-up questions, of course, come, go ahead. Great, thank you so much. Let's see, I'm trying to see if I have any other questions. Um, in the meantime, I'm actually, I'm glad we have Portugal here. I would like to hear, Ivo, what does engagement look like in the Portuguese hub? Hi, um, okay, so right now we are uh, setting up um, a consultation space in downtown where people can uh, go meet us even beyond the the sessions we are organizing with the, the participants we are organizing one of the group sessions for the 20th of this month and and the, the second i think for the 7th of october and um in terms of facilitation we, we are of course uh, following up on on the guidelines you provided but we are also <clears throat> trying to uh, take on a, a, a role of facilitator rather than a mediator of the sessions. And one of the things we are doing is trying to brush up on current uh, European, uh, the current or European agenda, so that we can somehow spare participants uh, the avenues of discussion on topics that the European Commission already or, or, or other <clears throat> European institutions have already worked through, even if on the implementation level, it doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so we, we know that many of the, the concerns of our participants, which are mostly young women uh, working in the arts around the Lisbon area, many of their concerns may not have uh, an actual practical application, but the, the scope uh, to which European structures can go without, you know, I mean, without becoming repressive in some way, it has already been achieved. And, and so we are going to be on the sessions, uh, just ensuring them, you know, if they go into certain discussions, don't worry, that's been solved keep dreaming, you know, just keep going towards the future. Let's not be stuck on the present or the past. Let's just take this opportunity, which is a unique opportunity to actually envision a utopia for Europe. Great, thank you, Ivo. I see we have another question um, asking about the Amplify project specifically, and how Amplify will contribute to the Conference on the Future of Europe process. So I'll give a little bit of context on this. Um, so we've heard now about the citizens panels that Sana has explained through and walked us through that process. And essentially, the information that the uh, panels will be receiving to decide about what the key topics that they would like to discuss will be taken directly from the conference platform, um, which means that the information or the recommendations that each of the hubs are creating and um, posting into the forum, as well as the culminating recommendation that we are creating with all of the key ideas and key thoughts that we are submitting to the parliament, these are being fed into this process of the conference. And so, of course, when we hear conference, we do think of the in-person um, aspect of the conference, but the conference is also the process of gathering these uh, this, the inputs and ideas and recommendations from the platform as well. 
So as we are working through this project, while, I mean, unless one of us is randomly chosen to be in the citizens panel, our input in the conference is, uh, are these bits of recommendation that we uh, can then also make a platform for across our social media, across our networks, across uh, other events that we can have, uh, that have open dialogue, discussion, debate, uh, based upon the work that has really happened at the community level with participants, really setting the pace for those conversations. So, yes, when we think of conference, perhaps we're not, we won't be there in person, but the idea is that our ideas are uh, taken up into consideration as data is analyzed and gathered into the process of the conference. Let's see. Great. Maybe, I'm trying to see if I have any other questions. Maybe one more question. Um, or just to check in in another hub would be great. Um, uh, Matea in Slovenia, if you could tell us a bit of what's happening in your hub. Hello, everybody. Yeah, um, we feel privileged uh, uh, by being included in this initiative. And on the other hand, we find this uh, um, activity as a very, very uh, challenging, so to say. I'm sure that it's quite a general opinion that, uh, you know, people feel a bit negative uh, right now or uh, quite, there is a lot of apathy towards the uh, uh, European Union uh, policies. So it's, uh, we felt that uh, we have a big challenge of trying to stimulate, uh, you know, um, those who are left out usually from the dialogue, dialogue to express their opinion, concerns, and uh, suggestions. Uh, and uh, in our case, when we were thinking how to find, um, uh, uh, knowing that we would not be able to involve everybody who is active on the fringes, uh, we were thinking that in Slovenia, maybe we will try to involve primarily uh, those that are not acting, uh, that are not uh, working in the central region of Slovenia, because Slo one of the problems Slovenia is facing is this uh, centralization. So uh, the majority of the culture and creative sectors operates in the uh, central part of the country. And therefore, our first event we uh, organized um, last week was in Murska Sobota, which is really in the eastern part of the country, uh, just near to the Hungarian border. And um, so we have this um, nice group uh, of uh, very different representatives of different organizations from different uh, creative subsectors um, um, sharing with us, with us their concerns. So this initial comment that I had was also uh, is also coming from that first meeting we had and um, uh, the next meeting we'll have is on Friday this will be organized in Ljubljana actually in the uh, representation of the commission in Ljubljana so it's uh, uh, quite a different uh, scenario with uh, also representative of the um, the commission, but again, we uh, try to invite uh, um, uh, representatives of the sector that we have mapped. And we uh, also tried to uh, map uh, those who are not uh, the most visible representatives of the sector. So those involved in a uh, um, project involving uh, minorities or handicapped people or uh, you know, uh, those uh, working with uh, um, uh, mental health issues uh, and similar. So we are still uh, trying to engage them uh, in one-to-one uh, -one conversations. So we'll see what happens, what will be the outcome uh, of the Friday's uh, meeting. And we are happy that we'll have Maya there as well for a short introduction. Yes, thank you, Matea. I look forward to it. Um, I actually wanted to take this opportunity since uh, Slovenia is now holding the presidency and next is France. I would like to hear from uh, Corinne how France is doing. 
in the framework of the upcoming presidency? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's clear that we are very happy to, to participate to the project Amplify. And in France, Amplify has a particular challenge because of the double context of the French presidency of the European Union and the presidential election next year. Um, so it's very important, in, in fact, to, to give the voices to, to, to non-streaming um, person, citizens. And uh, in fact, in France, we decided to target um, as maximum the organizations who are working with those uh, um, non-usual voices, uh, both from all the cultural sector or the social sector. So um, it's very challenging uh, to have them participating to, to, the, to the meetings because it's not usual for them and the relation with Europe, it's not so easy, <laughs> it's complex. And as I guess it was uh, last and I um, and I have all said it already, it's important uh, also to, to, um, to dream. And, and we hope that it's not only dreams, but it, 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 it's very important um, to, to, to open the box to, to what uh, they really want uh, Europe to achieve. I think it's very, very, very important. And uh, so we will have um, two working sessions. The first one will be on the 27th uh, of September and the second one on the 5th of, uh, of September. And um, as already discussed with some of the other herbs, we, we really do hope to have uh, some of the other herbs representatives of the organi organizers to take part to our workshops because it's very important also to have discussions um, between the different countries and, and, and then to, 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 to see what are the common common elements and if this is very important, but that's also really the role that you will uh, do as a Contraction Europe in order to coordinate all the results. Thank you so much for the update. I think we'll go back to Sana now who has uh, a question that she has received. Thank you, Maya. Sorry. No, I just thought maybe other people were wondering about the same thing as well. So I thought it might be useful. Um, the question was actually a, a reaction to what I said about the four cities where the citizens panels will meet and the fact that there are uh, in many of those are there are kind of strong universities or, or educational institutions with indeed a kind of a yeah, specializing already in EU affairs often or so the question was about uh, would it not make more sense to listen to other voices to or people who are not maybe so um, so much already uh, specialized in in EU affairs. Um, of course, of course, it is essential indeed to other to listen to other voices too, too, and that is why. Well, first of all, of course, it's essential to listen to all voices, and that's why projects like this one are great, are fantastic, and very necessary. Um, and uh, but secondly, those okay, yes, the, those locations indeed are associated often with um, or or there indeed are important educational uh, look, uh, institutions there. But the citizens panels themselves, um, they, they meet kind of among themselves in kind of a closed environment. And um, when you look at the kind of the composition of those citizens panels, uh, for example, socioeconomically, I already mentioned that uh, they are representative. But uh, I just looked at the data, 44% of those panels uh, of selected citizens have a higher education degree, 45% have completed secondary school, and 11% have uh, completed only primary school or no school. So there is, they have tried to um, to compose them. I mean, there, there's not just people who have uh, finished uh, academic uh, whatever studies or, or school who are in those panels. It's, they have indeed tried to, to really have a, a, a good kind of well, diversity of, of people in those panels. So just to, uh, to reassure you there. Thank you, Sana. I wanted to give uh, one last question to the room, um, everyone in Zoom with us today. If there are any questions that you have uh, for anyone here with us, or if any of the hubs have anything that they would like to add from their perspective, uh, please uh, raise your hand and um, we'll give some space to that now before we close. 
Let's see, I think I have Simona, yes. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to uh, brief you a bit uh, about what has been done so far. Uh, we have uh, in Romania, in Timisoara, um, we have uh, mapped uh, the uh, local cultural and uh, civic organizations working with uh, vulnerable groups uh, and uh, who could be trained in order to provide a series of uh, recommendations for the conference on the future of uh, Europe. In the second half of September, we have to uh, we will we plan to organize meeting with them to give us their feedback and uh, we are uh, underway to facilitate to identify a facilitator uh, for these uh, debates and uh, record their answers thank you thank you simona all right it looks like it might be time. I just wanted to actually give uh, some space to mention that we had a comment on Facebook that it said, it's not just about dreaming, it is important to do. And I think for all of us here, we all feel this, especially as we're getting more engaged with the work that's happening on the local level. Um, and it has been a very uh, uh, complex process and way of thinking and way of uh, trying to figure out how to make the dreams into reality. So we really hope that you continue to follow Amplify as the project develops and becomes more real and becomes more impactful. Um, and we'll continue to share with what the hubs are working on across um, our social media, our website, and hopefully you will continue to follow us along. You can, of course, follow our hashtags Amplify Cultural Deal EU, The Future is Yours, and Together EU. I want to thank uh, Sana de Reich for joining us today, and a big thank you to Astrid and Magda for sharing their work as well. And also extend the thank you to all of the hubs who are working so diligently at the community level and are here today. So thank you all very much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.